And welcome back once again, options traders. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about the math of averaging up. And you've heard me talk about this before. It's a really powerful technique for investors, but I've heard too many times that traders say, I don't like to average up because it harms my ROI and therefore I'm making less money. Well, this is just an absolute complete misunderstanding of the math of averaging up. So even though I've talked about this topic in previous videos, let's do a little deeper dive and figure out why it's wrong to think that averaging up is going to harm your investments. So before we get started, please remember to click like if you like these videos, it will definitely help the channel and would be much appreciated. So let's start off with the whole concept of averaging. Averaging is a technique in the trading world. We usually call it scaling in or scaling out. Scaling in usually, at least to most traders, mean that we will take small buys as the price drops. So we say, I'm willing to buy $10,000 into a position, but rather than putting it on all up front, maybe I'll take five trades of $2,000 each. And that way as the price drops, or if it drops, I'm able to reduce my cost basis. And it's an important caveat though, if you're going to scale in, that you don't exceed the maximum amount that you're willing to invest. Sometimes you'll hear traders who will say, you know, scaling in is a bad idea because you're just throwing good money after bad. And that's true if you're exceeding the amount you're willing to invest. So for example, again, you're willing to buy $10,000, let's say into this stock, and you put all $10,000 in up front. Well, if the stock falls later, yeah, it's probably not a good idea to put more and more money into it. That's where this whole notion of throwing good money after bad comes from. But if you're willing to put $10,000 into it and you say, you know what, let me put $2,000 in first. And therefore, if it falls, I can take a second buy. And if it falls again, I can take a third. And of course, we can do the reverse on the way out. But the basic idea is that by scaling in and taking these small bites is that it gives you a much better chance of capturing a good entry price. Because if you dump it all in up front, in this example, buying all $10,000 at once, the chances of you buying at the bottom is virtually zero. So when you average in, it's probably going to give you a much better average price. So the reverse of this is what we call scaling out. And that usually means that we will do some small sales as the price rises. So that's the basics of averaging or scaling in and out. But there is a problem with this when it's described to traders. And they'll say, well, averaging up increases your cost basis and therefore it reduces the return on the investment. So as I've shown before, if you do your first buy at 100, and you scale in and buy a second buy at 90, yes, your average cost between those two is 95, assuming you're putting the same dollar amounts each time, keeping them equally weighted. But what if you bought at 90 first and then at 100? It's still a 95 average cost. The market doesn't know the order in which you put the trades. So that's the first part of the fallacy, is that people think that they shouldn't average up when it's exactly the same idea as averaging as prices fall. But the real fallacy that we want to address in this video is the idea that it somehow this averaging is going to harm your ROI and actually put fewer dollars in your pocket. And that is just a flat out misunderstanding of the benefits of scaling in. So to see why it's a complete fallacy, let's jump over to an Excel spreadsheet and take a look at some examples. So in this Excel spreadsheet, I've just made up some numbers. I'm going to pick Bitcoin just because it's been on such a tear this past week, but it doesn't matter. It could be a stock, it could be an ETF, ETN, pick any asset that we're going to scale in. But let's just say that you started buying Bitcoin back when it was 20,000, and then it went up to 30,000, to 40,000, to 50,000, and 60,000. We're just going to look at that it's only going up. And the reason we're doing this again, is because this is where traders are saying it's not going to help you. So let's say that you buy $5,000 back here when it was at 20,000, you're seeing it rise and you're afraid to put more money into it because you think it's going to harm your 
ROI. And so this date in red, we're not putting any more money in. It's just our evaluation date. And let's say that it's trading for 60,000. And you say, hey, look at this. I put 5,000 in, I can get 15,000 out. And that's because the asset or the coin has gone up 200% or threefold. It's trading for 60,000, it was 20,000 when you started. That's a factor of three, three times higher, which is 200%. So your ROI, your return on investment is 200%. You invested 5,000, you get 15,000 out. Yes, great trade, no question. But would you have been harmed if you had averaged up and put more money in as it rose? Well, again, this is where traders make their first mistake. They'll say, if I put $5,000 back here, when it was trading at 20,000, my average cost is 20,000. If I bought another 5,000 here when it was at 30K, my average is 25,000. And then I bought more when it was 40,000, my average is 30. I bought more when it was up here at 50,000, my average is now 35,000. And they say, look, if I have an average cost of 35,000 and I sell it at 60,000, that's only 71% on my money. Well, that's completely misunderstanding the benefits of having more money into the position. So there's a number of mathematical mistakes and fallacies that are going on with this logic. So to point out the first one, let's say that you are a hardcore believer that you should never average up. You put $5,000 back here, and this is your $5,000. Now, when the coin goes up to 30,000, you tell your friend and you say, you know what, I think you should put $5,000 into Bitcoin because I'm really convinced it's going higher. So this is friend number one, invest 5,000 back here when it's trading for 30,000. It continues higher. Now it's trading at 40,000. You tell friend number two to put 5,000 in. Friend number two puts 5,000 in when it's up here at 40,000. Continues to chug along, it's up at 50,000. You tell friend number three to put in 5,000. So how did your three friends do? Well, number one paid 5,000, and when it's trading at 60,000, he can sell it for 10,000, right? Because he bought it at 30,000, and he's selling it at 60,000, which is two times. So he's got two times his money, or 100% ROI. Friend number two, Bought it when it was at 40,000, sold it at 60. So that's a 50% return. He's got 5,000 into it and he can sell for 7,500. He's certainly happy. Friend number three pays 5,000. Back here when it was 50,000, he sells it at 60,000, which is a 20% gain. So he pays five, he can sell it for 6,000, he's up 20%. So all of your friends are obviously happy. And in combination, they have made 23500 bucks. So you're saying, hey, listen, aren't you glad that you listened to me? I, in total, created $23,500 for all of my friends here. Well, think about it. If it was beneficial for your friends to individually put this money into an investment, why would it not be beneficial for you? What if you had invested at these points? Wouldn't you have an extra 23500 so let's do that. If you put 5,000 in, like you did back here, this 5,000 gets a 50% bump, and it's now worth 7,500. You put another 5,000, so you've got 12,500 into the investment, and now this 12,500 is taking the ride from 30,000 to 40,000. That's a 1.33% increase, or a 33% increase. And then you add another 5,000, taking it to 21,667. This 21,667 takes the ride from 40,000 to 50,000, or a factor of 1.25, 25% increase. And that takes it to $27,083. You add another 5,000, which brings you up to 32,083 bucks. And that, of course, takes the ride from 50,000 to 60,000, or another 20%. And look at that. You're up to 38.5, which is your initial 15,000 plus the 23.5 that your friends got. Take 15,000 plus 23.5, there's your 38.5. So the question is would you rather have $38,500 or 
Or would you rather have 15,000? Well, obviously, the 38.5, at least hopefully obviously, 38.5 is a whole lot better than 15, no matter what the ROI might be. Now, the next fallacy is to think that your ROI was reduced. And that's because in this example, I just assume that your average cost was 35,000 and you sold it at 60. That's what most traders look at. And that's why they think that their ROI is harmed. But what we need to do is to take what's called a time weighted return. We have to account for the fact that your first 5,000 took this 50% ride. And then we deposited another 5,000 and then this 12,500 took the 33% ride and so on. And to do that, we have to do a little calculation that's actually called a time-weighted calculation. And we're just going to take the increase, factor of 1.5, or a 50% increase going from 20,000 to 30,000. When we went from 30 to 40, that was a 33% increase, or 1.33 times on our money. When we went from 40 to 50, that was a 25% increase, or 1.25 times. And then from 50 to 60 was a 20% increase or 1.2 times. So what you're going to do is multiply all of these together and then subtract off one. So watch this. In Excel, I can do product, which just means multiply all of the numbers I'm about to give you. So we're going to multiply those four and then we're going to subtract off one. And what do you suppose that it is? It's two or 200% exactly what you got by just doing the one investment. So your ROI really isn't harmed and that's because each of these subsequent deposits are getting these returns. And that's the part that traders are missing. So always remember that the benefit of scaling up or down comes from the fact that you're putting more money into the position. If you're scaling in when prices are falling, yes, you are reducing your average cost. And that can certainly be a benefit, keep you from panicking. But just always remember that on the way up, it's no different. The market doesn't know that you bought on the way down or bought those same cash flows on the way up. They are exactly the same. It is not going to harm your ROI. So as I've talked about in previous videos, the big decision is, are you bullish? That's got to be the first thing to address, whether you're buying on the way down or the way up. And then number two, are you willing to increase those deltas? Because that is going to make it a potentially slippery slope if you are in fact wrong. But those are questions for future videos on how to hedge those risks. But for this video, I just want you to understand that if you are bullish on a particular asset and you are using a scaling strategy, it does not in any way harm your ROI if you are averaging up. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. You can find it all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the YouTube channel, Options A to Z Facebook Trading Group, and you can find the link in the description below.